Welcome to Chapter 8.2, The New Nation. In May of 1787, there were five men from 12 states um, who assembled in Pennsylvania at the Pennsylvania State House. Patrick Henry was noted to have said, I smell a rat, and as a result, he did not attend. But also, there were several other notable figures who were not there. Thomas Jefferson and Jan John Adams were both in Europe at this time, but most of the well-known political leaders were there. This included um, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, George Mason, Robert Morris, None of the delegates were common so, uh, farmers. They were all upper class white males. And they felt that the country suffered too much from being too democratic. They feared that ordinary people, if they were given access to power, would um, work against the, the interests of the privileged classes. And so that would actually undermine the uh, stability of of the United States as a whole, and so these this group of men were not necessarily committed to more democracy or more men and women um, voting for their leaders or being able to make decisions on crucial um, issues within the government, but they were more in, uh, interested in developing a system that would protect the rights of all the people within the society. On the first day, they chose Washington to be their um, leader or their president in the Congress. And this means that he basically kept order in the, in the room and made sure people's opinions were heard and just um, managed the flow of conversation. They also chose uh, James Madison to be the note taker because he, he had extraordinarily good skills in taking notes. Among those gathered, there were about 29 from that had been college educated, which was an extremely high percentage. College was very uh, only for the very few. There were also uh, 34 lawyers, 24 who had already served in Congress, and 21 who were veteran officers of the Revolution. This was a very uh, elite group of men. It soon became apparent that there was a bit of a political and social divide between the northern states and the southern states. And one of the main issues that was um, that had come up between those two was the issue of slavery. Virginia, which practiced slavery, knew that this would be a problem. And so one of the delegates, um, J James Madison, had come up with something called the Virginia Plan that would help to possibly alleviate some of the problems or the differences between the northern states and the southern states. The Virginia Plan actually called for getting rid of the Articles of Confederation altogether, which was something that they had not actually discussed beforehand. They wanted to form a new government that had the power to tax and to enforce its laws directly rather than having to ask the states to do all of these things. The Virginia Plan actually tried to solve the problem of large states versus small states. The problem was that large states would have, theoretically, more power in the new government than the small states simply because they were larger territorially and also um, population-wise. So the Virginia Plan called for the creation of two houses within the Congress. In, they would have the House of Representatives, which would uh, be based on population, and the Senate, which would be based on um, representation equally among the states. Each state would have two representatives, and so two votes. However, the senators were not chosen directly by the people, but were chosen by the state legislatures. The Senate would be in, in charge of choosing um, foreign officials or appointments to foreign countries, So, um, and they would also appoint the chief executive, and they would also appoint the national judiciary um, in order to be able to control what types of um, laws would be passed or enforced within the United States. On the opposing side, there was a group that 
that created something called the New Jersey Plan. This was an alternative to the purely federal idea that the Virginia Plan um, supported. This New Jersey Plan proposed that there be um, an increase in the central government's powers, but basically they would still remain uh, with one house in the Congress, and the, the states would continue to be represented equally with um, the same number of representatives per state. There was a lot of conversation and conflict between these two plans, uh, but eventually there was something called the Great Compromise, which was agreed upon. The Great Compromise enabled the delegates to come to some consensus about what type of government should be developed. They decided that a representation um, of population as well as individual states should be adhered to. So they created a bicameral legislature. That means it has two houses in the Congress. So there was the House of Representatives, which was a based on population, and there was the Senate, which was based on each state gets two representatives. The second part of the compromise was uh, a much deeper issue that ran that between the North and the South, and that was slavery. James Madison wrote that the real difference of interests lay not between the large and the small, but between the northern and southern states. And this was slavery and the consequences that that discrimination had caused. Southern delegates wanted to protect slavery because it was their fundamental um, uh, basis for their economic system in the South. They would not be able to produce the amount of cotton for the low price that they were able to produce it at if they did not have slavery. They would not be able to compete with other, uh, places, other people around the world. And in the North, the delegates wanted a government that was strong enough to regulate trade. To, and their hope was that it would be able to protect the infant um, industries that were beginning in the northern part of the United States, but needed to, to be able to compete with uh, imports coming in from places like Britain. And so they were hoping that the United States would be able to put tariffs on all imports so that the uh, local products would be less expensive and that people would then buy them. To boost their power, the Southerners wanted slaves to count as part of the population. And of course, the Northerners did not want this to happen. In the end, there was something called the three-fifths rule, which basically meant that three out of five people would be, or three out of five slaves would be counted for the Southern populations. Representatives from South Carolina and Georgia also demanded that there be a clause that protected the slave trade and, um, for as long as possible. This caused a lot of bitterness. The actual agreement included a provision that prevented any federal restrictions on the importation of slaves for at least 20 years. And they also included a clause that said that um, any runaway slave, what the per they were obligated to return to its own owner in the South. Most of the delegates agreed, however, that um, the dissolution of the Union was worse than the continuation of the slave trade, and so they agreed to these provisions in the new um, agreement. Madison's Virginia plan was also changed a bit in that the judiciary branch of government was greatly strengthened um, rather than his version, which had made a judiciary that was quite weak. This new judiciary um, branch would have the ability to proclaim actions of Congress or the president as being unconstitutional. This gave the judiciary branch a lot more power. The executive branch, which included the president, was also given more powers than, than Madison had envisioned. The president was given the power of veto, 
which meant that he could turn down legislation that the Congress wanted to pass. In order to um, protect the president, the, the delegates suggested that the president be elected directly by the people rather than chosen by the, the Senate or the um, House of Representatives. But the delegates also feared that the general population would not be sufficiently informed to make a wise decision. So they insulated the process by creating something called the Electoral College. The Electoral College is a system that was created by the Founding Fathers to try to insulate the, pre the position of president. So voters would vote for their candidate, and those, but the states would count up the number of votes per candidate, and they would then um, give their electors the, which side that they should vote on. So, for example, in Florida, there's 27 electors, and those 27 electors, if they, um, whichever candidate won, those 27 would vote for that that candidate. So they that candidate would receive 27 votes of the total, however many votes there are. When the uh, Constitution had finally been finished, after it had gone through the Committee of Styles tender administrations, they, um, the Founding Fathers um, were a bit hesitant about their product. Benjamin Franklin was noted to have said, though, I can I expect a perfect production to be uh, made? I consent, sir. This is the to this constitution because I expect no better, and because I am not sure that it is not the best. So he had a little bit of pride about this document that he had been a part in making. The delegates approve uh, voted their approval on September seventeenth, seventeen eighty seven and they sent copies to each state legislature to have them ratify the new document. They went far beyond just tweaking the Articles of Confederation a little bit. They created a new system of government. Those who supported this new government were called the Federalists. Sometimes they were also known as the Nationalists, but their opponents um, were very frustrated with that whole name. The opposition to the Federalists were sometimes known as Localists, but were more well-known as the Anti-Federalists. The Anti-Federalists' main argument was that it greatly weakened the authority of the states and it strengthened the federal government, which they did not agree with. One critic wrote that, as local governments will always possess a better representation of the feelings and interests of the people at large, it is obvious that these powers can uh, be deposited with much greater safety with the states than with the gen general government. It was at this time that a document or a, a collection of documents were written by, uh, called the Federalists. They were written by James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay in order to support the decision that the delegates had made in order to make a, a stronger central government. It was noted by observers that those areas that were um, closer to navigable rivers or ocean um, or were in cities, uh, urban areas, were more in favor of the Constitution. And those that lived in the backwoods and the backwater areas they were the ones who were against it. The ratification process was kind of a scary situation for many of the Federalists because they were not sure if the states would decide to side with the Federalists or against them. Supporters of the Constitution called themselves the Federalists. They were led by Alexander Hamilton um, and were supported also by George Washington and other founding fathers. Opponents of the new Constitution called themselves the Anti-Federalists. They feared that the Constitution gave too much power to the central government and that a republic could not work well as a large nation, that it was only um, a, an, 
government that would work well with small areas of land. James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay published the influential Federalist Papers, which helped to secure the adoption of the Constitution. It influenced people to decide to vote for the, the, the adoption of the Constitution. Areas within the United States that were involved with the commercial economy tended to approve of the adoption of the Articles, uh, well, of the Constitution, but those that disapproved were usually located in remote areas or in the back country. Initially, though many state constitutions had a Bill of Rights, the uh, Congress was going to not include a Bill of Rights in the Constitution. However, the Anti-Federalists insisted that there needed to be a set of, of rights in order for them to approve of the new Constitution. So if initially there were over 200 different bill rights that they wanted to have um, written down in the Constitution. But James Madison took the 200 and was able to consolidate them into, event well, eventually to 10 rights that they included in the Constitution. The, this Bill of Rights is, were included in the Constitution as amendments, and the first 10 amendments are the original Bill of Rights that the states agreed upon. The First Amendment prohibited the Congress from supporting an official religion um, and also provided for freedom of assembly. It also uh, supported freedom of speech and free press and the right to petition. Um, there were uh, many other amendments that were also guaranteed, including the right to bear arms and a limit to government's power of quartering troops in private homes, which was something that the colonists had experienced and really disliked. They also gave uh, restraint to government from unreasonable searches or seizures. It assured the people of their legal rights under a common law and included the prohibi uh, prohibition of uh, double jeopardy, which means that you could be tried for the same crime twice. They um, also provided for the right to not have to testify against yourself, and also due process of law. Um, you could, um, you had to have be tried for your crimes before your life, liberty, or property could be taken away from you. They also um, passed a bill or, or an amendment that protected any powers of the states that were not mentioned in the Constitution. So all state powers were retained, except for those things that were mentioned in the Constitution for the federal government. The Constitution, with its Bill of Rights, has been an inspiration to many other countries that have also um, decided to try to create as free as possible a society that will help to benefit their people.